back, Crusaders, to the Nerd Crusade podcast. This is episode 43. This episode, we're going to be talking about a few TV shows uh, that just came out and a finale of the Goosebumps uh, TV show. Uh, it's going to be a little, probably a little bit shorter this week because uh, uh, Courtney went on vacation and I got a new job where it requires me to work a lot more than I did before, so I can just sit around and watch TV all the time now. But uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about Goosebumps first. Uh, mm-hmm. This was the season finale. Uh, we finally got the backstory behind Slappy and basically the magician uh, who was stuck in his body called Kandu, which was apparently the, one of the magic words that saved the dude's life. But basically, it looked like he was a World War One soldier, right? No, or was that World War II? no. It, this wasn't any of the World Wars. So this, uh, we first see him fighting in the War of. 1879. Oh, okay. Uh, which was the British and I forget the other uh, country were fighting. Um, but that's what. No. <laughs> well, that's what this was. So okay, so it wasn't a world war. It, was, it wasn't no war 1879 with against Britain, Great Britain versus somebody. Yeah, which I forget <clears throat> who exactly off the top of my head. They don't say it in, in Goosebumps, but uh, looking it up. That's that war. Okay. So that makes sense when he says we're in a country we didn't belong in, fighting for something that wasn't ours. Yes. Because I think, well, it's World War One. That's not what World War was fought over. But well, guess, also, World War One wasn't 1879. Yeah, I, I was moving about, so I didn't catch the, the uh, year. Yeah. <laughs> um, But, <clears throat> so, he was basically a soldier in this war who got shot in a trench and then blown into some ancient temple. And saw some writing on a wall, read it, uh, ended up saving his life. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up studying all the inscriptions on the wall, which was basically the inscription for some great ritual um, to bring back all types of different monsters and everything from the past. Yeah, monsters, spirits, ghosts. Uh, all the horrors and nightmares that man could think of or yeah. ever written about. Um, basically... It's kind of it's kind of interesting because I was also like when I, once he explained what everything was, I was like, oh, let him win, please, and then we can have, like, him we'll have more reasons to have more episodes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so after he saves his own life by reading this uh, incantation, um, it jumps to eighteen eighty five. I want to say or 89 uh but it jumps ahead and he's in new york and he's at this rundown carnival which is run by a man who create or makes dummies out of coffin wood uh yes out of coffin wood he says it gives him a unique smell and weird <laughs> yeah, which I'm like, well, yeah. He didn't necessarily say if he was digging up bodies and taking their coffins for wood or if it was, it was like, I yeah, make coffins and I also use the same wood for my puppets. Yeah. And it's the great, and he was the great grandfather of Justin Long's character. Uh, so uh, he makes a deal with uh, the magician. Can do. Can do. He, so can do and him make a deal. And a year later, Kandu is cashing in on that deal. And he's turning everyone in his carnival into the giant puppets that we've been seeing throughout the show. And that really freaks out, freaks out the great-grandfather. As it has everyone in that family that's seen a vision of what was to come. Yeah. So he then turns on Kandu and basically... Uh, the puppet that can do like impressed him with when they first met and he made come to life he was slappy and the guy made slappy finish it to give it to give it to can do as a gift and then uh while can do's back was turned he read an incantation or at least tried to and actually finished it uh, in his dying breath as can do uh, started stabbing us as he started talking um but basically put can do's soul into slappy to stop him yeah so, uh, so, and that's all within the first five minutes. Yeah. So it's like a very violent, quick five minutes. And it was pretty good storytelling. Yeah, because you we, we know who the, was, who the coffin was and why Slappy wanted to get, find this coffin. Yeah. We know who Slappy is, what his background is. Um, 
And we, at the beginning, you don't know necessarily why he's doing this ritual. He explains that at the end. But um, we get to the origin stories of Slappy and kind of understand all that. Yeah. Uh, we already knew that Slappy was just a vessel for the soul because he got out of the coffin and walked away. Yep, at the end of the last yeah. episode. So um, now that he's free and running around this uh, Forks, Washington area. Forks, Washington. <laughs> um, the kids are back in Seattle. Except for except Lucas. Except for Lucas who ran home because he got scared at a, at a Seattle party and didn't know. Because think... he's a bitch. Yeah, he's, he's, just a bi- he's just a bitch. That's, that's <laughs> basically what he was. He's like, I don't like Seattle people. They're not our people. I gotta go back to my small town. Yeah. Um, and you should move here. Yeah, we're a little bit bitter about that because where we grew, where not where we grew, but where we went to college at in Washington was near a bunch of small towns. And the uh, community college we went to, there are a lot of people there that are like, Seattle's such a big city, I could never imagine going there. The same mentality yeah. these town folks, like, of uh, Meredith's dad. Yes. Like, I can't go to Seattle, I have a job. He's like, Seattle will pay you better, you dumb fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should go to Seattle, you're a guidance counselor. Like you, you can get guide more. children better there. <laughs> like, the fact that Lucas is like, oh, I can't, you can't move here, and like I don't like these people, and just runs away at a party. Yeah. So the kids wake up the next morning. They all, all of them, Meredith know that like Lucas is sick because he texted everybody but her. Because he's a bitch. Yep. Um, but when he gets back home, let's see his mom. Apparently, his dad showed up. Yes. And his dad tries to explain. Oh, you know, it was a witness protection program. I was a witness. They had to hide me. I'm like. We just protect some programs. They take they take your whole family with you. Yeah, because they know. Oh, you have a family. We could get to you through your family. Yeah. So the whole family gets hidden away. And this is kind of what ties into, I guess, the what we're not seeing, and how can do is turning people into puppets. He's not just reading, saying magic words, and boom, they're puppets. He's showing them a fanciful illusion, and if they fall for it. Then they become the puppet. Yeah. And so basically, Lucas falls for it, embraces his dad, because mom's like, oh, yeah, he told me all about it. And like, it's fine. It's fine. Embraces his dad, find, sees that it's can do, and then boom, turns into a puppet. Yeah. Um. So, like, when they turned the jock's father into a puppet at the end of the last episode, he showed that father, his father, like, some type of illusion that we didn't get to see. Yep. And he, and it, you have to agree with that illusion. Because yeah. when the kids get home, uh, they all get dropped off to their respective houses. Uh, the one jock kid, like, confesses his love for Meredith. It says, oh, just think about it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. He goes he home. He has the right way of, like, confess your love. It's yeah. It's like, it's up to you, but here it is. Like, I just want to give us a chance, that type of stuff. It didn't yeah. seem like he was also like, oh, you can't go to Seattle because I, I, I want to, I have feelings for you. It was more like, I could see him, like, offering, like, yeah, go to Seattle. We'll have a long distance. I'll just drive out there during the weekends or some shit. Yeah. Um, so... He kind of confesses his love to her, he, and then they kind of go home for her to think about it. When he gets home, there's a scout there from uh, UW. UW who's like, oh, yeah, he's going to give you a full scholarship because we watched all your tapes. And the uh, kid's like, well, what if I don't want to play football? And me and the scout's like, oh, that's not a problem. You'll still – you have scholarship, a social scholarship's social. still good. Which is like It's like that's bullshit. bullshit. And that's uh, when he's about to sign for it. He looks at the pen. I don't, and I don't see what the pen is. The pen doesn't say University of Washington. Okay. So yeah, because so it was blue tips- and it wasn't the color with UW anyway. Yeah. But that tips him off to where like, he he doesn't sign the paperwork. Yeah. And then we see Meredith at her house with so, somehow her mom's there, which technically I guess she was. No, she, she was not because she was in the tower. Though. She was not in the tower. She was when they all came back from being puppets. She was standing next to her husband. So I'm like, no. why is she there? She shouldn't have been there. Because she, she wasn't in the house with them during the illusion. Was. But she was in the tower later on. Okay. Anyway, her mom's there saying, oh, I left after you did. I got here before you somehow. Just confess that her and her dad are going to like try to work, things try work it out. And then that's when the jock guy comes in and says, no, it's fake. Run away. Leave. Yep. And she turns back to look at her parents and sees. Uh, uh, can do. Can do. And, and her dad her is a puppet. puppet. That yeah yeah that's why it's weird that at the end when the parents are in the spire, she's standing there like oh why is she there? No, it's her. So um, what ends up happening then is also like their gay friend like the guy that he had a crush on is like oh take me to prom type of thing. 
um, and he runs away from him. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, him and Izzy go and pick up Meredith and the jock guy. Like, oh, someone's weird going on. We gotta go find Lucas. And then they have this weird moment where they're like, oh, yeah, Izzy, Izzy told me that, like, something weird was going on. And they're like, Izzy, how did you know something was up? She's like, oh, yeah, because my mom said it's nice to see you. And like, oh, is that it? It's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, her mom's an asshole. Her mom doesn't say yeah. anything nice to her ever from what um, we've seen. Yeah. So, like, her mom being cordial in any fashion would totally tip her, tip her off. off. and be like, nope. <laughs> yeah. So they're running off. They go to, like, Nora's, like, little shack, snack, snack shack. And they see Lucas take off on a motorcycle. So they go and follow him, who then he goes to the school. And that's where we find that apparently during this weekend of them being in Vegas. And Candy Vegas? Turned, not Vegas, but being in Seattle. Candy turned the entire town into puppets and they built a spire. In a weekend. In a weekend that fits a thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm like, uh, how'd you do this magic voodoo shit? Yeah. That's fucking impressive. Um. This is where, like, they get captured, and Kandu explains this whole plan, because he thinks, because of what they've been through, uh, they'll understand and sympathize with his with his plan, which is, uh, it's basically the concept of, like, man is so evil that he, man needs, um, needs something supernatural, something way more powerful than we are in order to unite, unify us to fight against a, a greater... A common a enemy. A con- common enemy or a greater evil. So he's all doing this for the greater good, which is kind of weird because it's like he found he gets knocked into the that temple, reads the inscription, sees that it healed him, he lives forever. He doesn't have to do anything after that, no. and just decides, cool, I'm going to study all this, do this inscription, I'm going to release monsters into the world, so there's a common enemy, so man will unite and fight that, yeah, and no, there will be no more wars ever, yeah. Because it's like in dude, the... you weren't even in the Great War. Well, what like the fuck? in the flashback, it. Uh... Shows him talking to one of the other soldiers or uh, commanders, and he was saying, like... He was going to retreat. Yeah, we need a retreat. We don't belong here. This isn't right. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to lose any more men tonight. We're retreating on the other soldier, other officers. So, no, we got to stand our ground. Yeah. And that's when the attack happened. They basically killed him, but he saved his life by reading that incantation. Yeah. So, the kids get captured. He shows them his past trying to gain sympathy from him so they will be on his side like justin long did well yeah. kind of, we don't know well just long did for the deal like being famous yeah which is like everybody in his family has always made this deal with can do to do that where the kids are like no dude because of what we went through we know what you're doing is evil why the fuck would we agree with you mm-hmm. um so he's ready just to kill them and like every evil villain leaves and let like sends his minion to do it which is this the, the hell poodle, dog. The hellhound poodle. Which just along ends up braining, braining it with a, with a pen. Yeah. Um, to save him. And I guess, like, because he ha- just along's character has all the journals of uh, his family and whatnot. Um, so that's how he knows the whole backstory as well. I'm guessing since they had the had Candu spell book, they found a spell in there to make just along look like his great great ancestor. Yes. To trick can do and thinking that I thought that was a great scene where they come up with the idea. Yeah. Cause they don't say that, oh, Justin Long, we're gonna do a Yeah, so we're just spell. gonna bring somebody back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> and then it cuts to a scene where we see the great grandfather go up, walk out of the tent, go to Kandu and Yeah, make him think that they're going to all work together to stop him. But he says like, no no no. I'm yeah, and here. you see and you see him light the spire and yeah. everything goes up in flames. Which I'm like, oh, that's a cool dark shit. Yeah, because I was like, Let's oh, cool. Do that. This is working because they are definitely not surviving that. That yeah. thing was on fire. Immediately. Nobody's getting out of there. There's no way you're saving anybody with fire. But it turned out that was all just kind of an illusion to buy them some time to kind of try, turn Kandu into a puppet so they can try and find the spell that would reverse his healing. And... It's the goosebumps logic of find this spell, read it backwards, and then it'll undo everything and he'll die. Yeah. Like like he was supposed to from a bullet wound in the war. Um, So Kandu like, gets out of his puppet form and says, yeah, your, those spells don't work on me, whatnot. They threaten to burn the book thinking that, that he needs that. He's like, dude, I wrote the book. I know everything in it. Yeah. And then basically is about to go start and light the spire himself to start this ritual. Yeah. Um, and, like, he sends us... 
that smoky ember that, thing yeah, to bind everybody. Yeah, but Lucas gets well, not Lucas, but the jock guy gets out of it because the book is magic, and I guess he breaks the binds with that. Yep. Frees Meredith. Tells her to find find the spell because he knows like Madonna something. Um, so she has she has to look through the book for that while he tackles Candu to stop him from lighting, lighting. the spider. Yeah. Uh, she finds the spell, reads it, can do, reverts back to what he looked like in the war. His bullet wound comes back, and then war soldiers from his war uh, rise from the gr- from the ground or grave, basically tackle him to pull him back in back to hell or wherever they're they're from. Yeah. But in the process, he starts shooting bullets wildly at his at, at his ghost attackers, but then points the gun at Meredith, fires, and the jock jumps in front of it and gets shot. Yeah. Um, considering, like, one of them, one of the kid's parents, like, Izzy's mom was, like, the head doctor. Well, she's the head doctor at a, at a psycho ward, though. Yeah. But, like, the whole town's supposedly there, right? There's got to be a med- at least a medical professional that can handle a bullet wound to the gut. It wasn't like it was the to chest. Be, though, they were all just standing there, so they don't really have their equipment. True, but they got them to the hospital at least enough to where, like... To oh, stable him until he dies. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also, Spoiler. like... He wasn't shot in the chest. He wasn't. He was shot in the gut and on the side, so maybe like through the liver or something like that. Yeah, they could save his life. I'm like, that's not a death wound. Like, I think you could save his life. Yeah. And they literally come out and say, "Oh, it's a hurting tell parents." And I thought, okay, he died on the operating table, right? It's like, yeah. no. Um, all we can do is make him comfortable. He's gonna die. Yeah. Which it's I've like, never so heard that from a bullet wound. Like, guess what? We can't do anything. You're just gonna die. Like, I don't know, five, ten minutes. But I feel like here. since <laughs> he was a black kid, they're like, oh darn, we can't do anything. If he was a white kid, they're like, oh, let's go. Cool. Yeah, if it was Lucas. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, it's interesting to see in this scene while like they're all in the hospital waiting for her. Nora's blaming the parents, saying that they did this. Justin Long is blaming himself because he knows he's the reason why the kid got shot because he went and got slappy and made this new deal. Uh, to finish the stupid book, um, Lucas clearly is like, yeah, he jumped in front of the bullet to save Meredith. I didn't do that. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Meredith goes into his room, is telling him that like she really does want to give their uh, relationship a chance because um, she hears the doctor tell the parents like, yeah, we can only make him comfortable. There's nothing we can do for him. <laughs> and of course, she still has the book. Well, I thought she had a memory. So, oh, she so she to. had the book. So she says the spell again in the correct order, uh, order and brings him back to life. So yeah. I'm like, wow, that guy's going to live forever. Well, after he flatlined. Yeah, after he flatlined. It's like, wow, that guy's going to live forever. You just fucked him, dude. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. And then the very last scene, we see Justin Long walking into the bathroom crying. And washing his face off, like, because he's, he's still struggling with nobody... So far, nobody knows that he the kid's alive, because this just happened. It was a small scene between Meredith and him. Uh, so Justin Long's in the bathroom washing his face, like you said. He's feeling the guilt. Looks up in the mirror and sees Candy, and all he says is, "Oh man, not again." Yeah, and then cut to black. Yeah, which is like end of season. Which is like okay, her using the spell like means Candy can come back. Yeah. Um, and then we'll get to see how they integrate more. Of like the goosebumps horror stories into it because what you were saying is that like the scriptures on all the walls in that temple are like all the different, all different spells that bring something back, mm-hmm. some type of monster. So that means like we'll have like monster blood, um, the were rabbit, all like the other goosebumps stories. Yeah, they'll probably bring back. It'd be interesting to see if season two they do the same thing where like this was ten episodes. And what, eight of those episodes were integrations of other stories Mm -hmm. uh, brought into one storyline. Season two will, like, bring in another eight separate books. Yeah. Blend them together to tell us another storyline. That's if they get a season two. I don't know if they're slated for a season two. Yeah, I don't know. With streaming stuff, especially on on any of the seasons, we never know how successful it is. Um, cause like only one of our friends that we ever talked to has been like, oh yeah, I'm watching Goosebumps too. I was like, okay, yeah. cool. So people are watching it. Um, but we have no idea how many or how many people think it's good or thought it was lame or whatnot. Yeah. I think for like a, a, teen, a, a teen, like horror yeah. youth TV show made for, uh, teenagers or young adults, this follows the spirits of the books very well. Cause the books were not 
adult horror books. They were young adult horror, yeah. which weren't gory, which weren't like super creepy or give you nightmare stuff. Gore, yeah. Like they you were usually like something silly solved the problem at the end, but it was like some some weird thing that was supernatural affecting the main character. Yes. And this show fit that perfectly. Instead of mm-hmm. being, I like the fact that instead of being like a monster of the week show, like the original Goosebumps was, where it was just, and you follow sh- a different group of kids. Yeah, where it was just short stories, short shortened versions of the books, with uh, every week. This was a story arc mm-hmm. that combined everything, which kind of made it new and more fresh. Um, so, I didn't feel like season one. I would watch season two, whether they uh, hopefully they make one. I don't know what Disney uh, feels uh, about that, um, but hopefully it did well enough that they get it. I mean, it was way better than the Haunted Mansion movie that they oh, made. Oh, one hundred percent. And I love the uh, makeup design for the people puppets. Yeah, were re- done really well too. Yeah, because like the shininess on their face was done really well to make them yeah, actually yeah. look like wooden like puppets. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Uh, so go ahead, give it a full watch. All episodes out so you can just sit down and binge watch the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the next show, uh, we'll talk about two new shows that came out this week that we'll be following. Then next week we'll catch up on everything else. Um, first being uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yes. Uh, the animated series came out on Netflix last Friday. The great thing about this, and I kind of cool thing, I kind of luring a lot of people back into it, like... People who saw the movie and, like, maybe who really liked it or fans are definitely going to be jumping in to watch this. People who um, just maybe casually liked the movie, uh, a good thing that pulled them back was that they got the entire original cast from uh, the Edgar uh, Wright film Mm -hmm. back to voice all the characters. Um, And then this version of it is following, I I would assume, the manga. Yes. uh, Not necessarily the movie. (laughs) Like, it, there's definitely scenes in here that are like, that's the movie scene, but they did it a little bit different mm-hmm. uh, that are right here. And, like, this, the story plays out almost the same beats as the movie, uh, except there's, like, little longer scenes or shorter scenes or something that's a little bit different that's clearly from the manga. Um, we've both only watched the first episode of it. I believe it's, like, eight or ten episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. It's all out on Netflix now. We'll, can't, we'll give you a full catch up on that uh, next week after we've watched it all. Um, but so far pretty good. It's, uh, I, was, I like the animation. The animation's good. And it, uh, it does throw in some of those video game references. Yes. Uh, Cause the fight scene was like in like a pixel 2d thing. Yeah. At one point. <clears throat> um, some major differences is the green cast back is great, except they're yeah. all older. Yes. So like Michael Sarah in the movie kind of had a more of a high pitch young, young boyish voice. And, uh, until like he got his confidence at the end of the story, Scott sounds confident already. Well, not even confident. It's like his voice is already much deeper. Yeah, to the point where it doesn't sound like Michael Sarah did in the movie at all. Mm-hmm. But it is Michael Sarah. Like you listen to it long enough, you're like, okay, that is Michael Sarah's voice. Um, but it's more like the last was Michael Sarah, who's the asshole, <laughs> <laughs> and not the boyish like nerdy uh introvert michael Sarah from like arrested development or scott pilgrim yeah <clears throat> and even ramona like it is definitely the same actress but she sounds you all know, can tell that she sounds older and more mature yes. um same thing with uh kieran colkin who plays luke uh not lucas um linus is the is oh yes the, the gay the gay uh no the wallace gay. wallace wallace i'm sorry it was wallace he plays Wallace, who is the gay roommate. He, his voice sounds even deeper as well, too. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, the only other big difference is, and what we, you kind of assume, make the assumption of, like, the music is is still good, but you're saying, you're saying like, it sounded like it was more for this, the current generation yes. of today than it was for us when this movie was made, what? 2009 Nine. yeah yeah i think we saw when we lived in canada yeah mm, yeah maybe i can't remember yeah. so or late late 2000s early 10s yeah ish late aughts early 10s yeah um because the movie's music is really good and we really enjoy it but it has like a stereo hi-fi sound to it yes um which the only way i can describe that 
is it sounds like old records or stereo music that we used I used to listen to back in like the early eighties and stuff when everything came on a record. That's how the music sounds in the fr- in the movie. Mm-hmm. This is a little bit more like almost Teen Titans Japanese pop rock. Yeah, it's very crisp. It's not yeah. like raw or anything either. Yeah, because that's one of the things with that was so great is when Sex Bob Bomb played, and they had all their music uh, kind of battles. You had that kind of like live, gritty, like super hot mic feel to the music in the mm-hmm. movie. Where here, it doesn't sound like that yeah, at it's, all. It's way too crisp. Yeah. Um, and like, so the ma- uh, major difference is like, I was hoping to see what their animated version of Crash and the Boys will look like. Yeah. But they did, but there were just no shows to the event instead. Yeah. Um, it's funny because they sell those beats so while you're watching it, it's just we had just watched the movie. Just like, I'm like sitting there we're looking like, okay, when's he going to slap him so we got to play loud now? It's like, oh, he doesn't yeah. say that line because the same things are happening, but the Crash Slightly of the Boys different. aren't there, right? Yeah. Um, and the first episode ends on the Matthew Patel fight, ends in a, in a cliffhanger that's very different than what you would expect because it doesn't go by what the movie does. Mm-hmm. I'll have to watch the other episodes to see how that plays out. Um, but so far, very, very good. Very fun. Very fun. Definitely enjoy it. Like I said, the music's definitely different. And I think it's because the first movie or the movie was made with like our generation of mine. Like yes. people out of, that aren't just out of high school that are definitely in college, college or early in 20s. Like early, mid 20s, <clears throat> living life on their own. That's what the story still is, but I think it's true for the demographic of today's group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, what look because it's over ten years later, so it's another yes. generation in that situation and not us anymore. Mm-hmm. So the thing, the music is more appealing to that crowd than it necessarily is to us. It's still good. It's just if I was going to pick a soundtrack to listen to, I listen to the movie soundtrack versus this one. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um. But I'm glad you enjoyed it because uh, you watched the first episode as well. I thought it was really good. Yes. I'm excited to see uh, Chris Evans in there. I'm excited to see uh, <laughs> Brie Larson as uh, MV. Yes. Um, the dude that played Superman uh, back in the in the base battle. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see how everything flows. Um, it is kind of cool because it does look like we're getting a little bit more background on the Evil League because you're seeing Gideon planning everything. Yeah. Uh, which so you didn't get, get any of that in the yeah, movie. Yeah, so you're getting more of that, and then I think you're going to get more of Ramona and her evil ex's backgrounds, too, which yeah. will be nice. Um, maybe we'll get more of Scott's background. The background, yeah, which will be cool. Because so far, like, this first episode, like, Knives is barely in there. And yeah. they keep saying, like, oh, your girlfriend, Knives. And you're like... Yes. Because you don't see her, like, ever. And Scott's like... Uh, is she my girlfriend? I don't think she's my girlfriend. Yeah. Like, he doesn't even even consider them seriously dating, where in the movie, it was, yes, I'm dating a high schooler. Yeah, he was all... Like, he, was, he was proud about that for until everybody told him how fucking stupid he was. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, it's definitely, it's definitely worth watching, because it's going to be different from the movie. Yeah. But there's definitely going to be key nods to how the movie was shot, because the scene on the couch in the opening credits of the movie... It's not done the same, but that scene is still there. Yes. Um, which is why it also kind of feels weird because it's not the same song playing. Yeah. <laughs> but Couch and Young Neil on the couch watching them play their music is definitely there. And I would say the cartoon version of Scott Pilgrim rocking out on his bass looks way better than Michael Sarah doing in the movie. Yeah. He looks ridiculous, even though he learned how to play bass for those uh, scenes. It's like... You don't look like a bass player. You just look yeah, weird. Yeah, the animated Scott Pilgrim playing bass, he's more animated and, like, really into the music, too. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, that's Scott Pilgrim. Great show on Netflix. All the episodes are out now, so watch that as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, other great show that came out, uh, which came out with three episodes, but we've only ever watched the first one so far, and we'll catch up on all that later. This week is... Um, Mar- Monarch that's on Apple TV. Yes. This is a deeper dive into the Godzilla universe that was created back in 2015? Yes. 15 or 16? With Godzilla and then uh, Skull Island, King of the Monsters, Monsters. and then Kong versus Godzilla. 
this is that universe, but this is kind of th- shown through the eyes of Monarch and through um, also part of the eyes of just like people who survived some of the events that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this also is a story that's jumping through time. The special effects in it are great. They look just as good as they did in all those movies. Um, it's really cool that you got you get to actually see the full spider from the yes, band of force. Yes, that was and, really interesting. In uh, Skull Island. And it's so <laughs> creepy, too. Yeah, because it starts with John Goodman, which is great they got him back to play that role. I was shocked they were able to get him back. Yeah, I hope Ken Watanabe is in it as well. Yes, for um, like one of the flashback uh, scenes. That would be amazing. Yeah, or something that happens in between. because It's like, come on, Apple, I know you got the money. You got it. Where the first episode is right now, we're jumping through different time periods, but we're... Our modern day time period is after the events in San Francisco, but before yep. King of the Monsters. But when it starts off, you have John Goodman running through the woods. And if you've seen Skull Island, you know, okay, it's the, sp- the spider. Is it Kong chasing him? Oh, wait, no, maybe it's the spider thing chasing him. Yeah. And it turns out it is the spider thing. He runs out of the woods onto like a rocky shore. He has he was recording a video that sounded like he was recording it for his son or something. Yeah. About in the uh, case of his death. Yeah, in case of his death. Like, hey, if you're seeing this, I'm probably dead, but maybe I can leave you a legacy. Uh, and then he takes this bag and says he thinks he's gonna die because the spider like comes out of the woods and he's gonna run down at him. Uh, he chucks it into the water. Luckily for him, giant rock crab appears yeah <laughs> and fights the spider and both the crab and the spider fall into the ocean yeah uh narrowly dodging john goodman and he survives and then basically lives on to see what happens in uh skull, skull island, island where, where he, he does die. die yeah so this bag is floating off into the water eventually a japanese trawler uh, picks up a uh, fishing boat fishing boat is picking up it's nets, and they find a fisherman finds this bag. Yeah, but the they nets. find it uh, in 1970 so, something. Yeah, 1970 something. Um, <clears throat> then it cuts to like 2016, uh, right after, not not necessarily right after, but after the Godzilla attack in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And the world of the world's view of it, uh, as this woman is traveling to Japan, is Japanese. Uh, the Japanese cab driver is telling her like. Oh, it's a hoax. The whole thing was CGI. I have a podcast. Listen to it. Yeah. So it's like, okay, some of the world thinks Godzilla is a hoax. It wasn't real. She actually was on the Golden Gate Bridge at the time. Yep, in one of the buses. Yeah, one of the buses. And she was actually getting kids out of the bus as Godzilla was destroying the bridge. Yeah. Um, And it was, this is what I thought was like really brave about, especially for Apple. Mm-hmm. You had a bus full of children. She was getting them out. She doesn't get them all out. That bus. She got like four, four or five kids out. Yeah, but that bus falls, and it's very clearly that there's more kids in oh, there because you hear them screaming, and yeah. you even see a couple of kids, like in that in, the, door, in that, in that doorway. doorway. Yeah. So, the bus falls. She fails to save some of the kids who are, who are on that bus when they're trying to be evacuated. Um, so she's traumatized, and it's like because she also like. As she got out of the bus, was getting kids out. Like Godzilla turns and like yeah, and starts screaming. It looks like it's screaming right at her, so, which again is done really well. Like the graphics yes. on Godzilla look amazing. Still, all the monster uh, animations look great and were done really really well. Mm-hmm. Just right, same quality as the movies, right? Um, but so she's drastically traumatized by this, and like being in Japan. We're seeing, like, they have set up an uh, early warning system. They have signs for Godzilla evacuation. Yeah. You have it in the airport. You have it all around town where she's going. And we kind of find out that she's going to her father's apartment. Because he passed because away. Because he passed away. And basically she found a keychain of his in his office. And so she thinks she's there to kind of collect his effects and see what's going there. To her surprise, there's a woman and her son living there. And yeah, her... and her father's pictures are all over the apartment. <laughs> yeah, apparently he had two lives. Um, yeah, never really. explained what was going on. Uh, we do see later on that while she was in San Francisco, he does appear mm-hmm. uh, to her in like the refugee camp, but says, hey, you got to take care of your mother. I got to go. Doesn't explain what the hell he's talking about and then leaves. So like she's really resentful that he was gone most of her, her life uh, because doing his work but he was also with another family as she found out 
the family there, mother doesn't really speak English and has to rely on the son to translate. The son absolutely doesn't like her right from the get go. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Who You're not my you? sister. You're lying. This isn't real. He's yeah. my father. Um, and it's like, and she's like, no, he's my dad. I sent them on a vacation, him and my mom on a vacation to celebrate their 30 year anniversary. How long were you been married? Been married which which we don't get that answer to. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's like, don't talk to my mom that way. Yeah. And it's, which, like, it's and, kind of interesting because maybe that's another like note on like, Japanese culture versus American culture where like she immediately saw what was going on and accepted that my dad was cheating on my mom and had another family. Yeah. And was like immediately processed that as like, yep, he's a piece of shit. This is where he was his entire time. The son was like, no, you're a liar. You're full of shit. You're not my my half sister. Prove to me that my that uh my dad had was with your family. Yeah. Um and I mean, it could be just two different perspectives yeah. of how people process like that type of information but also clearly like he had a loving relationship with his dad even though he may not have been around and she clearly didn't have a good really uh, that a great relationship with mm-hmm. him because he wasn't around um so she processed it fairly quickly and the kid is even throughout the whole episode every time he starts hearing more things he doesn't want to hear about his father he's like no you're full of shit yeah he just shuts it down yeah. um basically he ends up uh through all this they have uh alarm a uh, godzilla early warning system go off Mm -hmm. um, as she's trying to leave and mother and son basically grab her, take her to the shelter where we get her flashback of what happened to her. Yeah. And and she has a panic attack. Yeah. Cause like that girl's been through shit. And like the people in Japan, a good handful of them think it may be bullshit, but the government's making us do this anyway. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause even the son was like, Almost appropriate for like, well, what happened in San Francisco? We're, we're, you were there, we weren't. Like, almost questioning, should, like, yeah. like, um, he doesn't believe what happened was real, which is understandable. I mean, that, when that first event happens, it only happens in that area. Yeah, and well, it happens it in, in San Francisco, Francisco Las Vegas, uh, the, Vegas, and also uh, Honolulu. Honolulu, yeah. And the only thing in Japan is the awakening of, at the a reactor that is abandoned anyway. So nobody was yes. really around to see the Minuto take off and fly away. Yeah. Cause that was all on lockdown by Monarch. Yeah. But there was the female Minuto in Vegas, Vegas. that just that tromped through everything, Godzilla and Honolulu, and then everything com- combining in San Francisco. So to the rest of the world, this was an American problem. Some might believe yeah. it. Some might not. The government's at least took it seriously enough that Japan has an early warning system and emergency shelters that they throw everybody in there. Which is also kind of very reminiscent of, like, old Godzilla movies. Japan always has, oh, Godzilla's coming, everybody hide, he's going to save us, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's really cool later on is that after the drill's over, they go back to the house, because the mom wants to have her her have tea with them. Because she's struggling to find out, understand what's all going on. Yeah. She understands that there was another, that her husband has another life somewhere possibly, but doesn't have all the details uh, because she's struggling to speak English. Uh, But the son takes her to the dad's office where they end up finding a safe uh, that has the Monarch uh, bag from the beginning of the movie in it. The show. Yeah. Or the show, (laughs) yeah. Uh, They take it to his hacker friend. She finds out it's encrypted, uh, gets a simple decryption thing off the internet and starts decoding everything. Little do they know is because she had to put, a, she ran through a sample online, which I'm like, you're a hacker. You should know to download the encryption code and like then try. Don't yeah. try your sample online. It pings Monarch's uh, radar. And so Monarch knows that somebody in Tokyo has some type of, some of their data. Um, they don't know where. They just know it pinpointed close as they get to is Tokyo. Yeah. So Monarch is freaking out on their side while they're going through the files and they're uh, trying to learn more about what her dad's work was. Mm-hmm. And then we flash back to a different well, period. Well, because uh, she was also about to leave, but she sees her grandmother in it, one of the encrypted uh, files, a photo of her grandmother in one of the encrypted files. That's right, yeah. And both her and the kid, kid uh, 
we're like, yeah, that's our grandma. Like, what is she doing? And she's standing in a giant footprint of Godzilla's. We're assuming it's Godzilla. I'm assuming it's Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, but during this episode, it's also been cutting back to the... 1979. 1979. Um, where we see her grandmother um, and another scientist and basically a security specialist who's played by Kurt Russell's son. Yes. Which is what's also really interesting here is Kurt Russell and his son are both in this, but they're both playing the same person. So basically... Which is why you have a little identical son to help play a younger version of you. I wonder if it's... I I really would like to know the story. Was it Kurt Russell's idea and his son's idea? Or was the cast version like, his son looks exactly like he did when he was younger. So we can do this Let's have him play the younger version and Kurt Russell play the older version of the character. Yeah. Because they look identical, basically. Yeah. So basically, in 1979, they're uh, not in Japan. I think they're in like Indonesia or something. Or s- no, is it oh, it's, s- maybe it's India. Maybe it's India. No, because the guy that or the kid that they run across looks uh 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 Scandinavian, like, like like Eastern Bloc. Yeah, Eastern Bloc. So maybe Russia or something like that. Something, or maybe one of those uh, other countries that are around yeah. The area. Um. Basically, they're there to investigate if their theory of underground tunnels and, like, um, titans and monsters are, are real. Mm-hmm. And they need to get evidence to bring it back, basically, to, mon- to, like, Monarch or whatnot. So, they're going into this highly radiated area, because as they're getting there, it's radiated like crazy. But then the radiation drops off. They run when they in, get to the center. When they get to the center. And it's like, but it's not as, even when they're walking through the woods, it's not going off as much as it did at the gate. Yeah. So, like, as they're going further and further in, the radiation is getting less and less and less on the Geiger meter. They run into this kid who's hunting rabbits. She tries to tell, like, hey, if you eat that, you're going to get sick. And the kid's like, no, it's all fairy tale. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's all bullshit. bullshit. It's not, that's not real. Here, I'll show you. Takes them to what basically looks like it might have been a nuclear reactor plant or yeah. some type of plant that's been shut down completely or whatnot. They get there. There is no radiation. At least not a whole lot. And she makes a comment of, hey, there's like a little bit here and then it disappears. Yeah. And it constantly disappears. And that's when Kurt Russell's uh, son uh, character basically says, oh, like it's being eaten because we know these things eat radiation, right? Yeah. Because he made a comment that he said that they think um, the atomic bomb is an, is an appetizer. Yeah. Um, so he, they end up going, uh, running their test, which blows a bunch of explosions around to like get a seismic reading to where like, boom, they have the evidence that they came there for. Yeah. But then they go snooping around some more and they literally find a nest of eggs. A huge nest of eggs. Which to us look like the Manulo eggs from the, from the first Godzilla movie. Yeah. Um, not, maybe not as much as like the salmon roe that it looked like, but it was like, all right, is that like that menudo thing's eggs again? Yeah. Uh, so they go down, they end up going down there to get genetic samples of it. Um, the grandmother and, uh, Kurt Russell's, uh, son goes down there as protection. Um, but she's falling apart all over the place. Uh, so the other scientist lowers her down. Kurt Russell's like son goes down by himself on his own rope. Uh, she's grabbing genetic samples. Earth, the earthquakes kind of happening because the there are seismic explosions, and the just eggs start hatching. hatching. And they're uh, they're not the Munudo thing. They're like giant cockroaches. Yeah, which is super <laughs> gross. And the effects on them are great because they look they look really realistic and really oh. well done. So uh, they're uh, trying to escape and like. The, sci- the weak scientist guy's trying to pull her up. Kurt Russell's kids, like, climb the rope himself. But, like, the bugs are climbing on each other and they grab her. Yep, and start climbing and on start her. Start climbing on her. And the kid's trying to, the other uh, scientist trying to pull her up, trying to pull her up, trying to pull her up. Um, Kurt Russell Russell's tries kid, to help. Yeah, Kurt Russell's kid tries to reach out and grab her. Um, but the kid drops the rope before he can grab her hand. And she just falls into this pile of bugs that are, that are newly born bugs that are there to eat her, basically, because they need yeah. food. Yeah. As the ground crumbles and everything falls underneath them, because the big mother bug's probably showing up too, because all of the seismic activity and they're by a nest. Yeah. So bugs hatch are probably eating her as they all fall. So that's how her their gram the grandmother died. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Uh, ends. 
is at that point. There's two more episodes that came out this week that we'll have to watch, and we'll see how much further they jump in time. <clears throat> but it shows that like Monarch's been studying this stuff we knew since Skull Island, since the six, 60s. But they've been sending out teams of scientists everywhere, and that's one of the things that uh, the girl noticed when she was in San Francisco is that when she, the bus fell and she was being running back away from the damaged bridge, she saw the monarch soldiers out there taking readings and taking st- pictures, pictures and studying everything. And she put it as like, they look like they're there on a field trip having the time of their life. Where it's like, all right, there's soldiers there. They're collecting evidence and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but they're obviously weren't concerned about saving citizens. They were concerned about collecting the data that they wanted to get. Yeah. Uh, which makes Monarch like this ominous federal government agency that like ha- that uh, has no has no uh, overseeing ju- jurisdiction over them. Mm-hmm. They can do whatever they want because they've proven what they're doing is real and has to be kept a secret until obviously Godzilla and King of the Monsters show up, right? Right. <clears throat> so it makes really it reminds me a lot of like uh, like X Files almost. Mm-hmm. But instead of being like a, a rogue two agents of a federal agency, it's like, here's a whole agency that's just kept secret, that's doing its own thing, and it's allowed to do what the fuck they want. Yeah. Because it's in the means of saving mankind, and for the better off, but the greater good of everybody, versus somebody nickel and diming them. Because like in uh, Skull Island, they were fighting for funding. Yes. But that funding's all kept secret about how they were getting it and whatnot. Um, and Kong, the Kong event basically proves that, hey, yeah, we're, we, we've got, we have <laughs> a real threat. Titan here. This is a real thing. And then they get all the funding they need because by Kong versus, uh, Godzilla, Kong's been transported to a different island. They have a whole facility there. Monarch is this huge federal uh, government agency that can do whatever the fuck they want. And we're kind of getting to see how they got there. Mm-hmm. And then what are their main goals? Because we never really find out what that is in the movies. Uh, the yeah, sec- they're still so they're, secretive. And they're basically, so far, we know is that they're studying it, except for in the second one, the mom goes rogue, or uh, goes rogue in King of the Monsters, and like, no, I'm going to wake up the Titans because they're the rulers of the world, blah, blah, blah. Basically <laughs> fucks everybody by waking up, uh, waking up, uh, what's, what's the three-headed dragon name? Oh, um... I can't remember. The one that's actually an alien and not from from this earth. That's yeah. Basically was going to take over the planet. She ends up waking him up in King of the Monsters, right? Um, so, great show. If you like the Godzilla universe, this show is it's absolutely 100% great. It's 100% for you. And I am thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely catch you up on the next two episodes as we walk uh, next week when we watch them and what, anything else that comes out. I don't know if they're going to do one episode a week moving forward or they're going to do three episodes. Yeah. Uh, but they're all about an hour long, so it's like at least three hours of television to watch. Um, so very good, very entertaining. Definitely suggest you watch it. Uh, we enjoyed it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see Kurt Russell in it. It's great that they <laughs> that some other people are noticing like these two people look alike. If you want like <laughs> well, a let's, young let's version of an old man, start using their sons. Because yeah, when I heard like saw his name in the credits, I was like, oh okay. He's also in this as well as his dad. Well, that's cool. I wonder what character he's going to play. And then I was like, oh, they're playing the same character. <laughs> cool. One's a younger version, one's an older version. That's absolutely yeah. what's happening here. And it works so well. Because yeah. uh, he is the spanking image of his father when he was young. It's like, whoa, boy. Yeah, if you don't know who we're talking about. Um, it's uh, Wyatt. Wyatt Russell. Yeah. He's in an episode of Black Mirror. He is the jock in uh, 22 Jump Street that, uh, what's his name, uh, has like the, the meet cute and the friendship with. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Jonah Hill gets all, all jealous about. And he was the new Captain America yeah, in, when, in uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, or Falcon Winter Soldier. Soldier. He becomes the agent by the end of the show. Um, so he's been a few things. Check him out. He's He's done like small bit roles. He's... But he's done a very good job. It's yes. great to be able to, be great to see him and his dad working on the same project, because um, he is a, fr- a fairly good actor. Um, and I think like him and one of their other kids are is possibly an actor. 
But um, Wyatt Russell's the one that like has Russell's name. Mm-hmm. The other girl doesn't even have Goldie Hawn's last name. That she has a different last name, I think. Yeah. That she uses for stage stuff. But great, sh- great show so far. If you love Godzilla, if you like Skull Island, King of the Monsters, and Kong vs. Godzilla, this is definitely the show to watch until their next one, which is, I guess, again, Kong v. Godzilla was like something yeah it was something uh that was teased before the strike and all that i'm like they can't fight each other again it has to be like them teaming up for something, something else big but they already took care of uh mecha godzilla mecha godzilla and godira who was the brain in mecha godzilla in this universe yeah um mothra's already been in there mothra's an ally to godzilla so i mean i guess there's the giant turtle and a bunch of other godzilla monsters they could fight yeah i mean there's a whole list of Godzilla monsters. Yeah, so, I mean, um, they haven't run out yet, and they can obviously use more. Um, I have enjoyed all these movies. Hopefully you have, uh, too. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm really enjoying the show, so, like, definitely check this out if you have Apple TV. It's not sponsored or anything, but, like, get a free... uh, Once the whole thing's out, get a free trial and watch the entire show. Yes. Um, They do have some other great shows on there, like... um, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is, like, three seasons of probably some of the best television you'll ever watch. Um, If you're into gaming, uh, Mythic Quest is surprisingly really good. (laughs) Um, It almost has a little bit of that, like, comedy that's in uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. uh, Because the guy uh, who plays Mac is one of the lead characters. Um, So definitely a fun show to watch. Um, But Apple TV does have some interesting things, so check it out if you can. Uh, If you already have it, Watch the show with us and let us know what you think. Uh, you can always find us at the www.nerdcrusade.com. Find us on twitch.tv uh, slash the nerd crusade and on YouTube, the nerd, the nerd crusade. Uh, I have a new job, so I'll be working a lot more, but I'll figure out what a streaming schedule is I can do once I have a stable schedule. But being a seasonal worker, who knows how that's going to work out because it's not as steady as they said it was going to be, or at least not as like. Here's the same schedule every week. It's been yeah. changing every other week. Um, so we'll get some more streaming up there. We'll f- uh, finally get uh, Alan Wake uh, 2 uh, played through and reviewed. Um, Phantom of Liberty completed, completely done <laughs> and whatnot. Now the game's completely uh, built. Yes. Um, but other than that, uh, we'll definitely keep you up to, uh, up to what's going on in all these TV shows that we're watching. We'll get back to Invincible and um scavengers reign uh here as well too yep as we have to catch up on that stuff it's just some of these shows are like there was all hour long episodes and like scavengers reign and monarch are like hey here's three episodes hey here's three episodes it's yeah like, it's like oof, you're giving me some hours <laughs> of content dude. There's, all, there's tons of stuff to watch and yeah do. okay but that's our show this week uh be sure to like and subscribe uh I know most people listen on spotify so definitely like and subscribe there yeah. And feel free to come to our webpage and let us know what you think, all right? That's www.nerdcrusade.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.